Okay, so I'm sorry about the time bar. How's that? There's like a clear, um, a little bit under where that equation is written, but everything else looks nice. Okay, so what do you want me to do? I'll just try to avoid that part. <laughs> All right. So, were you able to su successfully upload your homework? Okay. Yes. Good. Um, I checked the forum on Tuesday and nobody had participated. I didn't check before coming to class, but anybody made a contribution? Do you just create a thread? And yep. Then once I create it, everyone can, um, or do we create our own? Yes, you can create a, a thread and people can reply to that. Oh, okay. Um, so you have to make uh, two contributions. Uh, one has to be like answering a question. But the second one uh, could be either an answer or another question. Um, and I'm going to post the second one uh, tonight. So there's, you have two weeks to make a contribution, uh, but there's one every week. So today's the second Thursday. All right, what else? Um, I guess that's it. Any uh, questions from the Teams people? No? Okay, so last time we looked at uh, this guy. coefficient and if you multiply that times rho um, you get a length of one over length the units are um, meter squared over kilogram and we talk about uh, what it means. 
So this is kind of like, I always imagine like these atoms with shields. And depending on how big it is, you know, the shield is bigger so they can capture the photon or whatever they are uh, interacting with. And then um, the kilogram matters because um, if you have a heavier material, let's say um, lead or something like that, can you um, mute? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just because I changed my. It's fine. So if you have something uh, heavy like lead, you're going to have uh, le less absorbers. So it's a um, um, it's a function of both how heavy it is and how big the scattering cross section is. So. This one has units of meters, and it is um, a characteristic length. So it tells you, on average, how far a photon, or it could be a, another particle, is going to travel in the medium before it gets absorbed um, by, by an absorber. So keep those in mind. So we talked about the four different uh, mechanisms or that are going to contribute to the energy density. So um, absorption, uh, scattering, emission, and the emission could be thermal or, um, or nuclear. And um, what's the other one called? So nothing happens, the uh, transport. So, the mathematical treatment for scattering, it's pretty similar. So you're also going to have a cross-section. But um, you have two different situations. So you have a photon that is traveling in this direction. And it interacts with a scatterer, and it can move in many other directions. It might even, you know, bounce back. This is one case. But you can also have the case in which, from kind of random directions, they find the scatterer, and then they are moving in. Uh, in the end direction. So, one of the uh, homework problems, actually a couple, are about uh, this, uh, this scattering effect. So why is the sky blue? Mm. Sounds like kindergarten, but Because blue and other light is scattered less than the other colors. Which so one? kind of just because the other colors get scattered more. Actually, get, they get scattered less. Oh, my bad. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's correct. So. energy blue and this will be uh, long wavelength so this will be like the red color and it scales with the fourth power so blue is scattered much more than red and so you just see it all over the place but what about uh, we uh, the moon, one of the problems that I have in the homework is about 
um, calculating why when you see the moon on the horizon, it's kind of yellow. But when you see it above you, it's white. So how does this scattering explain that? Well, if you are looking at it over the horizon, you're looking at it through a, um, a longer patch of the atmosphere, and it's scattering the blue more than the red. So it goes in other directions while you receive uh, more of the initial uh, red. So scattering is a little bit like absorption, except that things are not absorbed, right? Like they're gonna move in other directions. So we can integrate this over a, a small cross section. And so this is going to be how our friend L changes with time. So you're going to have two parts. This is the scattering um, mm, parameter, I guess. So this is the first case in which uh, it's going to be with respect to in prime. So you have a random direction, and then it goes into uh, a straight direction. And then the other one going to be the opposite. I guess we can put this L over here. So the cool thing about this one is that if you integrate over um, all the directions, what's going to happen. It's going to cancel out. Right? Like, for the most part, these two contributions are going to be um, equal. So one cancel cancels the other one. So, this is the third one, scattering. The last one is emission.
and that's going to be equal to j So what is J looking at uh, this equation? Any ideas? A probability maybe? So what are the units? This one is an energy density per unit time. This one is kilogram per meter cubed. These joules is Right, meters per over second. Mm. Maybe I get confused. Anyways, that has the form kind of like a, a current. So it's um, energy per second. OK, so now we can put everything together. And we're going to assume that the energy density is not changing in time. So the derivative of L with respect to time is going to be zero. Mm -hmm. So I get rid of the time. This is transmission, this is absorption, and then we're going to have the scattering. I'm just going to write scattering. And then we're going to have the emission. So this is equation um, 1.2.6 in Weinberg. 
that has, in principle, all the physics. So we're going to define a few things. The, uh, well, this epsilon should be suggestive of something that we looked at before. So what would it be? Energy density? You're quiet. So, if we integrate over all the directions, so say in x and y, actually, we can do this again. What will you get from uh, scattering? So you have your you have your photons. They interact with uh, infinitesimal volume. They get scattered in every direction. And then you also count the ones that are scattered in every direction and you know, from here and then continue in this direction. And then you look at the volume. What is that going to be? Zero. Um, mm, no. So you still have this one? So this one goes away, the scattering. But you still have absorption, and you have emission, and you have uh, transport. So the transport, you can move it to the other side, because it's positive. And you're integrating over the volume, I mean the solid angle, so it's going to look like this. And then this one, you're integrating this guy over the solid angle, so it's going to look like this. And this one, just going to, oh, you integrate over the solid angle, so you get rid of that um, 4 pi. I think that's what I was missing in the, in the units. It should be a radian squared. Okay, so It's going to look like this.
represent. What do you see over here? The flux. So, if we make the flux zero, or the, sorry, the divergence zero, it means that everything remains inside of a volume, then uh, this emission times the density is going to be equal to this guy over here. So I'm going to, it's going to look. So what does that equation tell you? Where can the emission come from? The emission of photons, the generation of photons. Mentioned it last time. Thermal radiation and nuclear. And what is this E? That's the thermal radiation. So this equation is telling you that everything that is emitting is being absorbed. Does that describe, let's say, your body to a good approximation? You are radiating in the infrared, but you're only radiating from your surface, right? So most of the radiation that you are producing due to uh, heat is actually being absorbed by your other atoms. So they, it just remains in sight. So this is the equation for a black body. So when we analyze the spectrum, uh, say of a person, does the spectrum look like black body radiation? Yeah, right? That's like the typical problem in modern physics. Like they ask you to calculate the wavelength based on your temperature. So to a good approximation, we are uh, black bodies. Uh, why is that? Well, um, if you remember, it's called black body because it's not supposed to radiate anything. Everything remains inside. Uh, we radiate a very small fraction of all of our heat. So we are a good approximation to uh, a black body. We're not completely black because we do um, radiate. So what about stars? Are they black bodies? I see them. That means that they're not black bodies. You can see the sun. So, you know, the same, the same condition uh, holds. They do radiate, but it's a very small fraction of their overall heat. So if you look at the spectrum, it looks like a like black body. But it's not, because you can see the light. So. Uh, if this is the thermal radiation, 
then what do we need over here for it to not be uh, a block body? Well, we have to include the contribution of uh, the nuclear reaction, right? So you fuse the hydrogen atoms into helium and you get a photon, gamma ray. So J is going to be that. Plus, I'm going to use the other epsilon. And all of these are function of mm, the position and the frequency. So this epsilon, let's call it, mm, is this a script epsilon? I'll call this epsilon and this one script epsilon. Epsilon is a rate of generation. unit mass and per unit time check um, no frequency uh, really it's a unit time Okay, so that means that in the case of real objects, this is going to be equal to epsilon. This epsilon comes exclusively from nuclear reactions. All right, so Uh, this small volume, I have radius r over here, and this distance is dr. If the energy density is E over here, what is it going to be down here? Is it going to be greater or smaller than epsilon? Sure 
So imagine that this is the part of the surface of a star. So this is your radius, and you're looking at a very small, you know, you're, you're looking at a, a thin shell. And you want to know where is the energy greater, um, above or below? Is it below? Yes. Why? Because it's closer to the floor and more compact than the Yep, it's, it's closer to the core. So if you remember that equation, the DPDR, the pressure has to be greater, closer to the core than outside. And the, and the energy is proportional to the pressure. So the energy density has to be greater inside. So that this also gives you kind of the direction in which the uh, the radiation is going to move on average. Yes, it can move, you know, into the sun, but um, a larger fraction moves uh, in the opposite direction. Just because you have your your energy gradient and your uh, pressure gradient. So we're going to define uh, this new quantity. L, which is the uh, luminosity. So, is the radiation energy per unit uh, time? And L. going to be a function of the radius. So I guess uh, this quantity makes sense if you have um, something that is really bright, it is going to be luminous, as a large radiation energy uh, per unit time. So when you have a supernova explosion, for example, why is it so luminous? Well, because all that energy is radiated in like a few minutes. So the luminosity increases to be you know, similar to what you have for a, for a galaxy. So this is just the number of uh, photons, essentially, 